Welcome back everybody. Today we're going over the barrel that you see right here in my hand. This is a 16 inch mid-length Hanson Profile Premium Series barrel from Ballistic Advantage. So without much yapping from me here in the intro, we're going to actually step out to the range, see what kind of groups we can get out of this barrel, and then come back in and get into details. And of course, before all that happens, we'll let the dogs take a look at it to make sure it gets their seal of approval. Time to see how it actually shoots. So we have a few different loads here, and uh, this really, I suppose, is the meat and potatoes of the review, is the accuracy. So first up, we'll start out with something heavy. I think actually three of the loads we have here are pretty heavy for uh, caliber. This is gonna be the uh, Fioki 223 uh, Match King hollow point boat tail round. And uh, target is down range at 100 yards. The lower we have here has a uh, Geissele G2S trigger in there. Excellent, excellent budget trigger if you're looking for an upgrade, but still like duty worthy, if you will. Um, so we can't blame anything on the trigger during this test. And the glass is a, a Trigicon. It's a two to 10 power scope. And so it's very clear, shooting at a hundred yards should not be an issue with that type of magnification. So that's pretty much the setup we got. Of course, we have the uh, CTK Precision Rest and that's pretty much it. Let's see what it'll do. Oh, that last one opened it up. Still looks pretty good though. Anyway, next we'll go with a lighter load here. This is the uh, Gorilla Ammunition 55 grain Sierra Blitzkrieg um, bullet. And uh, we'll see how it likes the lighter stuff. Gorilla tends to be very, very consistent ammo, which is something I like and talk about a lot. They do offer a discount, at least as of this video anyway. And you'll see it down there on the bottom of your screen. That looks pretty good as well. Next up, we have the uh, Free Munitions. This is their heavy stuff. It's their 77 grain all point boat tail remanufactured ammo. It's a 223 chambering. We will see how this one does. Not too shabby. The last one we're gonna do is some uh, Federal. This is the um, FC262 loading. It's 77 grain OTM, 556 chambering. Uh, this is a particular around a lot of folks use for hunting in 556 or self-defense. Tends to be a very good load for that. It's very proven. So we'll see what it'll do through this barrel. It feels warm, but it shouldn't be problematically so. Let's do it. That one looks good. Let's go measure them. Started out there with the Fioki 77 grain there, and you can see center to center. We're right at an inch and a half with that load, then came down to the Gorilla here. I think that one's gonna be the winner. We're right at three quarters of an inch with that load. Then I believe we came over here with the, uh, I believe Freedom 77 grain. 
And let's look. Right at an inch and three quarters on that one. And then up here with the Federal 77 OTM load. That one's pretty good as well, I think. Yep, right at one inch on that one, regardless of how you measure it. So uh, with this guy behind the trigger anyway, and a rest and a decent trigger, the barrel certainly shoots. Obviously, if you guys are hand loaders, you can work up a load for it. Or if not, just buy a few and see which uh, which one your particular barrel likes. But this one seems to do well with, obviously, we had some 77 grain and 55 grain. So through the gamut of weights and lengths of bullets. So that's certainly a good sign. With the groups out of the way, we'll get into a little bit more detail here on the barrel. We have half by 28 threads out there on the end. So any of your flash hiders, muzzle brakes, suppressors, anything like that, that you want to throw on there should work just fine. It also has an 11 degree recessed target crown that all of the premium uh, ballistic advantage barrels have. So that right there is one thing that contributed to the accuracy that you guys saw out there. The finish on this barrel is a bead blasted finish and that is one of the things that comes with all of the premium series uh, in the stainless steel variety anyway barrels. This one here of course is made out of 416R stainless steel and it is MP and HP tested so they fire a proof load through it and then they use the magnetic particle inspection process to make sure that there's no micro cracks or micro fractures in the actual steel material make sure it's good to go and should give you long barrel life. Of course, the profile of the barrel is the Hansen profile. However, there are two different profiles, basically one that utilizes a uh, 0.625 gas block like we have here. It's the lighter weight version of the two and one that utilizes the 0.750 gas block or the standard gas block um, that most folks are used to. That one, of course, is going to be a little bit heavier. But this barrel here comes in right at 22 ounces um, on my scale. And I believe that's actually the quoted spec for it as well. And just to kind of give you an idea of the barrel profile, I have an M4 a barrel here that you guys can take a look at. Of course, this one here, the Hansen series, is going to give you a mid-length gas system, whereas this one here is a carbine-length gas system. But what you'll see is basically a barrel profile that, in terms of uh, weight handling characteristics as well as shooting characteristics, just doesn't make a lot of sense. So uh, here you'll see what would be under the handguard is actually a little bit thinner than what we have here on this Hansen series barrel. But then forward of the gas block, we have a thicker portion so this is a 0.75 inches up here and at this one here is 0.625 going forward so out on the end of the rifle where you really don't want a lot of weight uh, that's where the m4 and the government profile barrels will add a lot of weight and back here where you want it you want that rigidity and you want that heat dispersion um, which a thicker barrel provides this one doesn't have it here so really as i've said several times the uh, m4 barrels and the government profile barrels just generally don't make a lot of sense. Now this one here makes a ton of sense. It's not quite a continuous taper. It's basically a continuous taper here from the chamber area down to the gas block. And then they have that little one inch section there. So that way you can uh, set your gas block. And I should also mention that the premium series barrels here from Ballistic Advantage will come with a gas block and it will be pre-drilled for the pinning on there. So basically you're just going to knock the pin through when you actually install the barrel. There you guys can see the markings on the barrel. Of course, we have the uh, Ballistic Advantage logo, then 223 Wild, which we'll get into here in just a second, and then the 1 and 8 twist rate, and 416R like we already talked about, and then the Hansen logo down there on the end. So uh, basically, let's talk about the 223 Wild here real quick. So 556 came about as a military cartridge, I believe, in the 50s. Um, and then a gentleman named Bill Wild uh, was basically looking at the differences between 223 Remington and then 556. And uh, what he saw there was the free bore portion of the chamber. He thought that he'd be able to safely fire uh, 556 cartridges in a chamber that had a little bit tighter free bore. And basically what that would do is in theory, um, assuming everything else has already done well with the barrel construction, give you a little bit more accuracy and a little bit more consistency as the bullet leaves the case. So uh, we're rolling in pictures here that you guys can take a look at and see exactly what I'm talking about. But that really is the big difference between the 223 wild chamber and the 556. So you can still fire 556 in this chambering and not have to worry about any sort of pressure issues that you might have with a standard 223 Remington chamber, but it gives you that um, freeboard diameter that's a little bit tighter, um, which should, in theory, again, assuming everything else is already done well, uh, give you just a little bit more accuracy out of that barrel. I think I hit up most of the high points on this barrel. I know one that I left out was that the Premium Series has the uh, Fail Zero Nickel Boron coated barrel extensions and it also has the M4 feed ramps. Um, so that certainly is another feature 
to throw into the barrel. Now in terms of cost, uh, this one here right now, it may change in the future, but right now is going for $250 over at Ballistic Advantage's website. And they're also throwing in a free upper receiver um, with the M4 feed ramp cuts, of course, as well if you guys purchase, at least as of when I'm making this video. If you guys are watching this months or years from now, don't come back at me and be mad about the price or the upper receiver not being the same as what I'm saying right now. But for $250 with the Low Pro gas block, and of course this one here is 4140 steel and is uh, nitrided as well, so it's a very good high quality uh, gas block and the pinning service already done for you, which is also nice. Um, I don't think that price is out of the ordinary at all or extraordinary rather. Um, it seems to be in line with what you get with a really high quality barrel that you'd see from other manufacturers factors out there on the market and of course ballistic advantage has the uh, moa guarantee all the details are over on their site for that but they do guarantee their barrels will shoot moa as you saw here today this one certainly will do that now not really sure what i could say about the barrel that i haven't so far but i really do like these continuous taper type designs this one here is not exactly continuous taper but it's pretty darn close it gives you the barrel material where you need it that rigidity that heat dissipation like we talked about and not a lot of weight hanging out out there on the front which is probably the worst place that you can have it in terms of handling characteristics as well as barrel performance um, overall so if you guys have any questions about this barrel that we didn't cover here in the review you can always post down below in the comment section you can also post over at my Facebook page as always. That is generally the best way to get in touch with me. I don't always see comments here uh, these days on YouTube, Full30 and elsewhere, but I seem to see them over on Facebook. So best way to get in touch with me is over there. If you guys haven't subscribed yet to the channel, please go ahead and do so, especially if you like what you saw here today. And I hope to see all of you in the next video.